What's up, y'all? I'm JJ McCorvey. I'm a journalist who writes about business and blackness. And I'm Shayna Watson, a fashion industry professional and writer with my eye constantly on social and cultural em- impacts of trends and style. And, and this, this is, is your business. Because it really is our business, all of it. Right? Each week, we'll be doing our damnness to make business news and topics more accessible and relatable to people of color, from how we set up an LLC to why Silicon Valley needs more brown faces. And, you know, since this is our first episode, Shane and I thought it would be a good idea to just talk about why we wanted to start this and just who we are and, you know, uh, the perspective that we could bring to this topic. Right. So, uh, Shana, you want to start? Sure. Um, you know, we, we've we talked about this for a while, that I don't feel like I'm very business-minded. Like, I'm way on the more creative side. And it took talking to you to recognize that, like, a lot of what I do and love is still business-related. Mm-hmm. Um, which really made me recognize that there is probably a lot more millennial people of color who are sitting back saying, like, I can't digest this. And people are talking about things that don't feel in the realm of my life. And so... Mm-hmm. We really wanted to make it more palatable and not only say, here's what's going on, but here's how we can also be a part of it mm-hmm. without the legacy of wealth that non-people of color have in this country. Here's how we can still be involved in this and make the system work for us. For sure. Um, and yeah, and you know, similarly, you know, I um, am a business journalist and I never planned to get into business writing. You know, I knew I, I was always kind of a tech nerd, but um, you know, I started writing for Inc. Magazine when I first moved to New York and then uh, for Fast Company. And I was just like always amazed by like just how much business is in our everyday world, you know, from the music we listen to and like who owns the music to, you know, the people who finance our movies and the food we eat and, and, uh, and, and what we drink. And just like, there's so much business around us that, you know, as you said, millennials of color partake in and contribute to. And so seldomly are we kind of thought of as um, the proprietors uh, or participants uh, in the creation of that. Right. And it's all ours, you know, like this is a part of, Our lives, the things that are happening in our government and our economy affect us more so than wealthy white people who have pensions, you know? Mm -hmm. And so it's like these kind of things, they feel so disconnected from us, but we still have, God willing, huge futures ahead of us. And so we need to be able to be prepared. Yep. Cool. Well, with that said, let's prepare. Let's go. (laughs) Let's go. So, um, you know... First, I want to talk about the government shutdown. Right. right? Still. This is um, Still happening. the fifth week, uh, and it's ridiculous. You know, 800,000 federal workers are not getting, about to not get their next paycheck uh, this Friday, which would be the second paycheck, all uh, because uh, President Trump uh, does not Who's want that? to. <laughs> Uh, who, who this? Not my president. Uh, <laughs> because he doesn't um, want to fund the government or sign off on a bill to, to fund the government that doesn't include funding for a border wall, which is uh, largely, uh, by most experts, considered to be um, ineffective and a nonsensical uh, policy. Right. Plan, and so. like also, like how walls work. It is that they don't go up to heaven and they right. don't go down they to China. And so like Yeah, like <laughs> it's not gonna stop it. Like I, I was in Mexico last October for one of my best friend's weddings and our Uber driver was like showing us he's like, There's already a wall here, but it's just like a metal kind of you know, step stool kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And it's like this new one would be the same. So so yeah, so <laughs> there are um Hundreds of thousands of people, um, lots of whom obviously are people of color who work for the government and are not getting paychecks, but um, are expected to work these jobs uh, for a month, basically since Christmas, uh, with no paycheck. And I, um, you know, this struck me. Um, I think you know, one, I don't work for the government, obviously, but um, it. I think because we get so. Re- we are so removed for it and we get so caught up in our daily lives that we don't think about like the real toll that this takes on people. Yeah. And I was on, I was watching YouTube, um, this video by a, uh, a 
channel called Beam, B-E-M-E. And this journalist went um, kind of up close and personal with this TSA worker, who's this older black man, um, who basically said, you know, uh, one, he uh, he works for TSA and he had just gotten a letter like summoning him back to work um, to work for free. And he basically said he didn't, you know, if 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 the uh, funding bill wasn't signed soon, um, he wasn't gonna be able to pay his, the next month's rent. And he's like literally going. He he went with a journalist to go to um to file for unemployment, and there was like another TSA worker there, like in uniform. <laughs> it was just like, what is happening? And, and you know, it just you know we know what it means to like work for free in this country there's another term for that right you know but we also know that this country loves to fund a slave trade Mm. love and like for me this is such a privileged thing to have to think about but there's like days that i don't want to do my job for pay Mm -hmm. like there's days that i'm just like do i really need to be here and work this hard you know and so like just the concept of like showing up in the expectation that you'll be doing not not your passion work that you'll be doing work for someone else to make money for other companies for free for free and it's like yep. do but do the high are the higher ups also not being paid right which which probably yes <laughs> as as usual yeah wow um yeah i mean and there's been all kind of um all kinds of studies uh recently that showed you know that the economic impact overall from this is gone is we don't even know yet you know uh, and it's likely going to be larger than what president trump thinks it is um and why are you calling him <laughs> okay i'll just say trump yeah it's like irking me yeah. okay sorry <laughs> um but yeah you think about like you know there's entrepreneurs who um you know, uh, uh, there's all kinds of backlogs at like local small business administration offices. Yeah. Um, because th- those people are not working, a lot of those offices won, but also their their uh, grants can't get funded. So people are basically their entrepreneurs right now on hold. And again, like a lot of minority entrepreneurs like depend on those kinds of grants to get off the ground. Um, and even like you think about. Um, uh, farmers, you know, a lot of black farmers are not getting um, their grants, uh, and there's already kind of a history of this among like black farmers being discriminated against by the USDA and not getting their um, their uh, grants because of because they're black. Right. <laughs> and like Obama, um, President Obama, uh, you know, just recently, like now you know, that like, is ma- a maybe like five or six years ago, got you know their, them their funding after like you know, decades of being discriminated against. And so now here we are again. Um, you know, it's just, it's really, a, um, I don't want to, oh, do we want to use the, do we want to, uh, have this be a profanity filled podcast or, <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know. I feel like, I mean, we just have to let it, yeah. let it ride. Say, but... I, I, I can say what Cardi B called it. It's a hell hole. Yeah. Right That's what yes. She Cardi. Yeah, I love yeah. I her political, it jumped out like what? Where did this come from? But she all, yeah, remember she used to talk about taxes, like how nuts that was, and like uh-huh. Cardi. It's like, but I feel like Cardi is the spirit animal of your business because she even says on the things like, not that I know, like she's like, this is not my expertise. She's like, like I don't do this. I don't do this, yeah. but what I do know mm-hmm. is how this is affecting me and people that I know and people that look like me, mm-hmm. which is like all we're trying to do. Like nobody, and like. Nobody's saying that we're experts in this. I mean, you more so than me, but like, no. So we're not saying that, but we're saying that this influences us. So mm-hmm. we're able to talk about it, mm-hmm. and that makes us experts of something. And we need to learn more about it, to, right? To learn how to navigate it, right? Um, and this last thing I say on this is, I'm I'm just surprised that there is not more outrage and commentary from um, the business community and. You know, uh, business CEOs, you know, you think about like all these uh, airlines that are, you know, flying arguably less safe planes. You know, you hear about these stories about people, passengers um, being able to get guns on planes, you know, <laughs> or, Which, or, or, like, or through, or through TSA security. is all up and through my twist out right. every <laughs> single time I travel. <laughs> but this obviously white man, because. If it wasn't, it wouldn't have happened. Mm-hmm. Could get a gun from Atlanta to Tokyo. Mm-hmm. But you're worried about what's in my top knot? Mm-hmm. 
when I heard that, I was just like, well, you know, maybe a year top knot won't get patted down as vigorously. It does. Since. I've been flying. <laughs> You've been flying during. Nothing's the changed. <laughs> Yeah, I flew for Christmas, and then when I went to Chicago, nothing's changed. They're still worried about the underwire of my bra setting off the machine. It's right. like so much, but but I mean, the, the I mean, like I said, the, why aren't airline CEOs talking about this or kind of coming out against it? Why aren't restaurants who you know are vulnerable to like like less safe food? You know because. Uh, uh, FDA, FDA. Are, are, sh- are not able to uh, perform parts of their job. So, right. you know, it's just like, um, as always, a lot of times what happens with, with these kinds of crises um, is that uh, brown and black people um, bear the brunt of it, you right. know? And so I just hope it gets resolved soon. Yeah, and a friend of mine who works for the government posted today that she had been taking gift cards like while she travels um, to just like give to the TSA to basically say thank you, but Mm -hmm. they can't accept those, but they do accept packaged food. So I feel Mm -hmm. like if there's anything we feel like we want to do, I know there's been some like stories about uh, restaurants that have been giving free food to TSA workers. And it's not, it's not just them obviously, but Mm -hmm. if there's like any little thing that we can do to like be human during this time, for sure. Because um, it is hard to know how to help, like, those of us that aren't affected by it. Yeah. All righty. So, are we ready to move on to the kind of better news, I guess? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Is it better news? <laughs> I'm so glad we didn't talk about this before recording. <laughs> um, so, there was an announcement made on MLK Day uh-huh. about 2020 potential, I guess now confirmed presidential candidate, Miss mm-hmm. Harris. Mm-hmm. Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, you know, I want to root for everyone black. Uh-huh. Everyone brown. She's black. She's black. She, okay. I'm sure she, I'm pretty sure she's black identified. Okay. You know, the okay. same way that Barack Obama was black identified. Right. You know. yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So for that, I am supportive um but there's a lot about her time as attorney general that worries me Mm -hmm. she is she seems to be very law and order and the people that are mostly influenced by law and order are us Mm -hmm. and um she also seems to be very as attorney general she did a lot of work with uh prostitution and kind of targeting what she feels like is women being exploited. Whereas Mm -hmm. like not all sex workers are underage children being exploited. It's a choice, you know? And so, and sometimes it's a choice birthed out of. Some would say an entrepreneurial choice. Right. Mm -hmm. Or, or it could be birthed out of oppression, right? Like Mm -hmm. this is my last, this is my last job. Mm -hmm. But like, if, if what I want to do is sell my body, because at the end of the day, we're all having sex for something. So if that's what I want to do, like, why is it the government's job mm-hmm. to protect that? Mm-hmm. And, like, same way it's not the government's job to tell me that I can't abort a baby that I'm care, You know, like, and so it worries me of what she has shown in the past is important to her. And some of the truancy laws that she pushed super hard on that were really, like, finding black mothers who couldn't keep control of their kids. Like, mm. it just... It scares me to have somebody so law heavy. I like I don't think that's what we need. On one hand, I like that she um is such a force, right? I I like that, you know, when we have Senate hearings, like she's the one who's pressing, you know, uh Supreme Court nominees and uh making um, you know, notable racist senator and uh, former attorney general Jeff Sessions squirm and say, I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> I can't answer your question so fast. Right. Well, good, you know. So I like that about her, and I like that it's a black woman, like, um, putting the presses to these white men, right? right? But on the other hand, I agree with much of what you said, you know. Her tough on crime stance um, in the past has, uh, is kind of troubling you know um she uh when she, i think when she ran for ag in california like she said she you know did not support the death penalty and then like 
you know, once she was elected, like, fought to keep it. You know, it's just, like, um, you know, a lot of, like, wrongful um, convictions, you know, uh, that, you know, when, when DNA evidence came out and showed that these people were innocent, um, she was silent on it. Some people say that she uh, fought to keep them in jail. So it was just, like, okay, you know, like, how, how I don't know, I just feel very, like, conflicted about it because you, you want to root for her right um and you know she and she's been asked about it she she went to howard university recently um uh to speak and the um and the interviewer asked her to address it and she she kind of like on one hand she said the bus the book stopped with her but then she said which means what well, she said she took full responsibility for her, what her office did right while she was california ag but then she said there were case, there were cases where people made decision uh, in her office and they didn't consult with her and I'm like, well, girl, I thought you were You're the book stops with you, right. so, <laughs> you know. So I'm I'm conflicted about it. That sounds like Shea Moisture's excuse. Yeah, they're like, we sign off on everything except that one really racist thing that happened that didn't come through us. Right. And it's like, yeah, it wasn't our fault, but okay, it, everything everything stops else, with us. right? Yeah. No. Right. Yuck. So yeah, so I you know. I do I do see the the potential like I see this the the significance of this of a tough kind of hard ass, you know, uh black woman running against this um potentially running against a president who, you know, is perhaps the most corrupt of in all history. <laughs> um and I see the benefits of that uh from a from a, a campaign standpoint. But as far as like what it bodes for black people and, you know, uh, you know, we're just now kind of, you know, over the last couple of years kind of making uh, s- uh, considerable strides in prison reform. Right? right. And so like to then like elect this person who was like super tough on crime is a little worrying to me. So yeah. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. And, you know, sometimes I like don't have an optimistic view, but like. This country's <laughs> not gonna elect a black woman president. I'm sorry, not right now. Part of me wants to believe that the country is in such dire straits that you could put like, you know, Elmo, you know. <laughs> but we see that popular vote doesn't matter, right? It's like who the electoral college would choose, mm-hmm. and they chose Trump over Hillary, mm-hmm. and those will be most likely the same people choosing this one. I don't Trump. I don't see it happening. I think that we got Trump because we had Obama and I just don't think that the I mean racist- you also got Trump because of election meddling and Russia help. So, you know. I, I'm 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 much I'm I'm more likely to qualify these days because the more that comes out about how much he had help. Um, right. But you think all those you think the numbers were yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, think I think propaganda is a very powerful thing, and I think having Russia helping him on the social media front was extremely helpful. Um, but you know, oh no, that's another yeah. part. <laughs> that's another topic. I just don't see it <laughs> happening. Yeah. Um, which might be a, a good thing, but I mean, we don't need him again, obviously. So it's not like I'm saying. Against the two, I wouldn't pick her, but um, she worries me. Yeah. And she's an yeah. AKA, so. Because <laughs> uh, you're a Delta. Yes. Right. <laughs> but I mean, whatever. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, so, yeah. I mean, it should be interesting to see what happens and, like, what kind of monkeys they try to call her. Because. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's gonna! It's oh just, my gosh. It's gonna imagine? be. No. I'm just, like, preparing myself. It's gonna be so bad. Yeah. Like, I feel like she's super light. So they'll have to come up with something new, that but like that, that didn't stop with Obama. He was light skinned. Not as light as her though. I couldn't even tell she was black. You lie. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> I couldn't. That's why I asked I'm you. I'm not doing this. With I you. thought she was like I don't know Indian and white or something. I you did tell, not I think that she lady was, was Indian yes, I and did. white. I didn't think she was black. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I had to ask you. I'm not doing this with this <laughs> podcast today. I'm, I'm not. I'm not because you knew God, doggone well that that lady was black. I did. You can, you can hear it in her voice. She's black. 
You can't hear it in her voice. I don't think vocals are race identifying. I think a lot of times they are. Well, what about you Michelle? Can't... Michelle Williams' damn husband. Her voice sounded. His voice sounded <laughs> so black, and he's white as hell. That's what he was putting on. <laughs> well, so, you don't think she could be, especially? I'll stop. <laughs> no, I do believe that. I I do believe that. And I've never been able to figure it out, but I believe that black people have a certain texture to their voice. Where they can, you can, they can be, some black people can be talking as, you know, quote unquote, articulate. Right. Or proper, or as, you know, we've been told, I'm sure. Right. Uh, at some point in our lives, white as possible. And you can still hear it in their voice. There's like, like an the oppression. Texture. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I always think about when black people sing. It's just like, there's always like a little. I cannot. There's just like always a little slavery. <laughs> I could not. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. Well, I'm I'm interested and horrified to see like what's yeah. going to come next cuz like we're just like at the series finale of America, but um speaking of horrified, R. Kelly. Uh, <laughs> like what a segue. You didn't know what was coming, did I you? I did it cuz like there's so much to be horrified right. about. So, did you watch the doc? I didn't because um, I I had to prepare myself. Yeah, no, you do. Like, They're I, awful. Like as an abuse survivor, like I, you know, I like I went to my my I was at my boyfriend's house when it was like, um, Ooh. <laughs> like whatever. <laughs> uh, I, when it was airing, and um, his roommate was like watching it like nonstop, and so I would hear it in the background, and I would just like close up, like no, can't do it. Yeah, no, no, it's I have to prepare myself. I I do want to. But at this point, I do wonder if I need to. You don't. It's telling you that R. Kelly is a pedophile and a rapist. Oh, okay, so I need to. Yeah, like, it, <laughs> and it's and you know what else it's really telling you, which I'll spoil it, mm-hmm. is that everyone knew, mm. everyone around him knew, which like, duh, and like everyone like like his band manager, his tour manager, girls, his bodyguards who were going to the mall and picking up girls for him. The guy who forged Aaliyah's age on the marriage. Like, everybody Ugh. knew they all need to go to jail. They all are guilty. That's basically 100% what all, the only thing you're going to find out. All right. So, I don't need to watch um, it. No. I know, I know what it is then. <laughs> it's really bad. I actually, I watched all of them, like, as they came out. And mm-hmm. something about the third episode shook me so badly. I had nightmares that night. Uh-huh. Like, about me being trapped. About, like, it being somebody I know. And so, it's like. And I'm, and you know, I don't have a history of sexual abuse, and so if it did that to me, yeah, I can only imagine. And my prayers, honestly, have been for any survivors watching it, mm-hmm. and for the girls that he still has now. Now that things are falling apart, can you imagine the monster that he really is the now? He's cornered. He's cornered, and they're still there. Mm-hmm. And so I, I've been like. Not even posting as much as I normally would about on social media because I just feel like how off until he's in jail and he can't hurt anybody else. How awful for these women yeah. to like, you know, Sony dropped him. Can you imagine what he was like coming home? Yeah. If he was a monster regularly yeah. when things were fine, like, can you imagine? That went some, that anger went somewhere. Oh my yeah. gosh! And so I've just been feeling because he still has women like, yeah. um. So that yeah, it's awful. My heart goes out to them. It does. Like I just he. Some he needs to somebody needs to kill him. Like what is happening? No sense. Why, like why is he still able to do this? Like some monsters yeah. aren't gonna stop until you like drive the stake through. Yeah. They're not. And he called him. He called like Teflon Don is such. He knows this. Yeah. He knows. And you know I have to say this because people always talk about his the Pied Piper, right? Mm-hmm. And so the story of the Pied Piper, <laughs> people think that it was so. It was like a Grimm's fairy tale or whatever. Mm-hmm. People think that it was this guy who played the flute and got kids to follow him around out of the town, which Mm. is true. The end part of it is the reason that he did that is because the kids' parents owed him money and he took all the kids out of the town and killed them. (gasps) That's the end of the Pied Piper that no one talks about. Wow. Yes. And so of all the fairy tales this man could have picked for himself to be. (sighs) And so what happened in the beginning. Yes. I mean, he can't read, but I'm sure somebody (laughs) told him about it. I'm sure somebody told him, but I mean, maybe, I don't know, because I, I just like read up on it, but yeah, like people talk about the Pied Piper was like, 
this fairy tale guy, he like played a flute and rats used to follow him around. And then he was like, oh, if I can get rats to do that, then I could probably have anybody follow me with this music. Oh. Took the kids out, killed them all. They were all kids, though, so oh how gosh. fitting. Um, but anyway, I feel like what has really come after this is the aftermath of people reacting, which has, of course, been garbage. Like, Dame da- did you hear but Dame Dash came out and was talking about how he was like, I knew all along, I didn't want to be a part of it, but it's like, nigga, you was in the Fiesta video popping bottles. Like, I didn't even see him. I don't remember yes, that. he was. I knew that him and... Um, you know, Jay Z had a lot of business together, obviously. Right, um, and then Jay Z and R. Kelly did Best of Both Worlds, mm-hmm. and then they fell out, right? Because R. Kelly thought they saw a gun and ran off stage. <laughs> Is that what happened? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> he like abandoned the tour, and they fell out. Not because of the, you know, right? Not because of all the right. awful things. Right. It's like this other thing, which like we'll come back to Jay Z, but um, <laughs> so like all these celebrities now are coming back and like either apologizing or really showing their ass of like how far we'll go to support black men at the detriment of survivors and abuse victims Mm -hmm. like and that's like the rooting for everybody black that i'm not a part of Mm -hmm. so recently our fave well i don't know if she could be a fave anymore erica badu you heard what she did i did it and I get sad. love and light, and I get, like, you know, we're believers, and, like, I understand that. But, like, this is the time, the your love and light need to be centered towards the people that he's hurting. Right. He, like, doesn't need your prayers and support. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I went back at, you know, I, Erica Badu is my favorite artist. Mm. And, um, like, I know every album. Well, it's up in New America, uh, the second one, I didn't like that. But, but you know, she, um, when I saw, you know, her trending, obviously I was just like, okay, what? Please, no. Um, and, you know, usually that means there's some foolishness. And right. then when I read it, first I was aghast by some of the quotes. And then I watched the the whole, vi- did you watch the whole video? No. Of, so I just it, read the quote. Yeah, I mean, it. It's still kind of iffy, but the video gives it a little more context in that it wasn't like she was saying she she was saying like let's let's support R. Kelly in his time of need. You know, it was like uh we can pray for him to get help, you know, like that kind of thing. Like it, I I didn't get like a support him and like ignore victims because she said she you know she's sent light to the victims too you know um but i think it's just i guess my my thing is why even because you know she has some she's made some controversial yeah she's very yeah like about short skirts and like all this and like you know when like uh, basically like victim blaming a hundred percent and so um why even Mm -hmm. you know knowing like the like that you have such a diehard fan base and like knowing that people come to your live shows for your live shows. Right. Why would you even like inject that into like to me that's just not the scene to be sending love and yeah, light. Support to him in like, private. Yeah, like pray for him. If and that's keep really it your brother yeah. and your friend. But then yeah. also reevaluate like why that's your brother, because he's a monster. <laughs> but yeah, like I didn't understand why that was I mean she was in Chicago, so I guess she felt compelled because like Chicago's been doing the right thing and like not letting him perform there right. um but yeah that was just like a weird fight to have it was is that I mean R. Kelly is not the hill I would ever die on I care who I am or where I'm performing but people will um, people do <laughs> um but I do I mean I do you know we talk about this a lot as friends and you know and you know as podcast hosts um about like when to cancel and like mm-hmm. um and I, I do think that. Um, oh, I was surprised when I once I saw the whole video. I guess I was surprised by people's reaction still, that I like that she shouldn't be, you know, praying like saying making like statements about him getting help and like, you know, I I I still feel as a, as a Christian and as like you know someone who believes in God and like and, and spreading light. I I do think there is it is a feat, definitely. 
Um, but I do think there is something about like the calling to like to still be able to like pray for people yeah. who are mm-hmm. monsters. Yep. Um, and it's <clears throat> tough. <laughs> um, but I think that you know, I don't think that she should be come down for come down on for that. But I she has made much more controversial and like uh idiotic statements uh, right. than that but my i guess my you know you mentioned sony like earlier but i guess my question is why did it even take so long money for them to <laughs> and and they're it's black girls is it but but are, is he like making that much money for them still like i mean his he's like getting a lot of Spotify streams. Yeah. Because they refuse to take his music down. But. Yeah. Oh, and did you... Speaking of, did you see that Spotify is launching soon a um, Do Not Play This Artist feature? No. I love that. Hmm. That I think that's so good. Like, and I, I mean, it's... To me, it's like... It's good because if I don't ever want to hear R. Kelly again, right. I don't you have get to. to do that. I don't have to like put any money in his pocket. Right. But also, it's smart On for them oh, yeah. as a business because then they never have to. Stand they never up. have to worry about it again, and they never have to like say, "Oh, well, we." You know, we want we'll make sure that he's not on this playlist or that playlist. So like, anytime you know, because they because they uh, I think it was last year or a couple years ago. Um, it might have been because of him, or maybe another artist, but. Um, they made they did yeah, something where they started that. curating their playlist and saying, "Okay, we'll remove this artist yeah. off, we'll remove this artist off." And then um, Kendrick Lamar and his label um, and somebody else threatened to pull all their music from Spotify, and then they backed away from it. And so I think this is a much uh, smarter um, move because it kind of it gives it gives the functionality, but it kind of a lot it kind of gives them some space and some distance from it yeah um it's just i, I like that it is smart it sounds yeah. like they have like a mastermind there who never has to pick a side <laughs> and figured out <laughs> the best way to do that so thumbs up Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> why are you like this <laughs> so i put on here who is next mm-hmm. right because my friend, I was, like, out to drinks with my friends last week, and my friend brought up a really good point, is that, like, we're all ready to cancel R. Kelly, but, like, what about MJ? Yeah. Like, MJ, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's, like, wh- what? who's the next artist, and, like, are we going to cancel them if we really feel like they are, like, a genius? And, you know, mm-hmm. we talk about this a lot with Cosby Show. Like, Cosby Show was mm-hmm. my, shaped my childhood. Mm-hmm. Like, I have been Denise Huxtable yeah. my whole life, and, yeah. like... I, not to say I can't, but I haven't stopped watching it. Yeah, I was in Philadelphia last week, and uh, my, I I can't keep saying boyfriend, but. (laughs) I mean, buddy, yes. Philip and I were just kind of like hanging around, and um, and he had not seen, you you know, you and I watched the the Big Fun in Baltimore episode. Yes, all the time. All all the time. And so so he had not watched it like since the 90s, since it first came out. And so we had to like do the whole thing and like Baltimore, America. You know, (laughs) what? Cliff, tell me, have you ever had donuts? Have you ever had donuts? (laughs) Not on the weekend. (laughs) Right? It's so, and yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's tough. It is. And and I, I do think it brings up this uh, again, that question of like art, ver- like how do we appreciate the art, you right. know? And and even though we know the 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 potentially dark things that are happening right. with the person, right? Because like, are we ready to cancel Michael Jackson? And you know, and you know, I think there's a do- a similar documentary coming out with him soon. Mm-hmm. Heavy thoughts, heavy yes, thoughts, heavy thoughts. Um, all right, let's what. Potentially some good news. Okay. Really quick. Yeah. Did you see the Fire Festival documentary? I didn't, but I do have a funny story. Okay. It's really good, by the way. Yeah. So, one, I I learned today, actually, that um, that uh, you should 
probably watch the one on Hulu, not Netflix. Yeah, that's what everyone said, but I watched a Netflix one. Okay. Well, the apparently the people who made the Netflix one are complicit in the Fire Festival. Thing. What? Yeah. How? Well, they kind of... Why, though? I, they talk so bad about it. I don't it. know the details, but they were involved in the whole fiasco, apparently. Why they? Why would they put out a documentary, though? What do you mean? Because the documentary... Because <laughs> so, PR, because like... saving face. Oh, my gosh. But I don't, again, I don't know the details, but this is this is just... Um, I was listening to another podcast earlier today, and they mentioned it. Um, so, uh, I'm going to trust that. And watch the Hulu one. <laughs> That's Netflix. insane. I want to see the Hulu one too, but like what stood out to me about the Netflix one, and like now this makes so much more sense because <laughs> the case that they <laughs> built against the founder and Ja Rule were like so strong. Uh-huh. That you don't even want to question who else was involved. Right. And that's why I don't understand how Ja Rule is just like chilling, tweeting about it. He was in every single clip, mm-hmm. like Talking about this isn't fraud. We're doing the right thing, and it's just like jaw. Yeah. Like we've been hearing your voice say it's murder from murder. like uh, right from early two thousands. Like we know that was you on the phone call. We heard you. <laughs> Did like, he really try to say it wasn't him on yeah, the phone? Yeah, <laughs> he was like, oh, you guys don't even know. And we're like, we've been hearing you scream it's murder in mics since we were like what fifteen years old. What I do with my baby? <laughs> yeah, like we know your voice, jaw rule. <laughs> So it just was like, but now knowing that Netflix was like maybe trying to just point a bunch of fingers is yeah. very interesting. It is interesting. Um, I I don't even know if I need to just because I followed it so closely. And another, my funny story is that um, my roommate um, was gonna go. No, uh. my, but my, <laughs> my roommate. So before I moved in. My roommate uh, had another roommate, obviously, and she worked on a fire festival. <laughs> I can't say her name. Was this the crazy one with the boxes? Yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> she was like, oh my gosh. Kind of a hoarder and like had boxes and stuff piled up to the ceiling. There are still marks on our ceiling now, literally marks on the ceiling from how high she had our boxes piled up in the <laughs> room. And she, um, she, uh, was involved in a fire festival and um like when I moved in the FBI came looking for her. No uh, they left a card in the door. And they said that in the doc that like they were just trying to talk they were mm-hmm. like leaving cards and saying like you're not in trouble. We just wanna know what you know. hmm They sure mm-hmm. came looking for her. Gee <laughs> It was crazy. Yeah. I watched it over the weekend and like we were just like cracking up because number one, this is not nice, but like if you want to spend this from something that, like, has no... They had, like... By the time the fire Festival came, they hadn't updated their Instagram for, like, months. It's like, none of y'all were suspicious. And then you just forked out six to $8,000 right. to go hang with a Jenner on a... Come on. Like, yeah. you kind of... Come on. But it was really interesting. I would suggest you, like... Yeah, like, I want to watch the Hulu one. The Netflix one, just, like had me laughing, had me shaking my head, but then also had me sad for the workers in the Bahamas that, mm-hmm. like, to have con- nothing. Con- and also contracted other individuals out, so had to, like, yeah, deal go with into, that. Their pay- yeah. into their savings to pay them. Yep. And- or, or one of the guys was like, I just didn't have it, but I had to eventually move because, like, oh my God. this is my neighborhood, and now everybody's looking at me, you know? Like, yeah. you, like, ruin lives. Yeah. Well, the good thing is I've read that there's a GoFundMe campaign for one of those women oh that's good um i like and it and it surpassed um it's uh it surpassed its goal by a lot um well if netflix was trying to cover their tracks then good job because you got at least yeah did one good thing 160k she raised that's good yeah yeah hopefully like those are the only people that i feel the most worried about yeah for sure um all right you have good news after all of well, that, well, let's. <laughs> I guess none of this is really good. Good. Um, yeah, oh man, we need we need some. Um, let Let's make a point to like make sure we include some good news in yeah. your business. Um, I mean, what a potentially. I I will say this is good news because it's just about damn time. But um, so Microsoft is investing um, five hundred million dollars for um, housing inequality in Seattle, and so the significance of that for me is 
a lot of times in um in these uh, uh tech heavy cities like think about Seattle where um also Amazon is right. um and obviously Silicon Valley the uh, the San Francisco Bay Area um where like everybody else is <laughs> basically um a lot of times what happens is People are, um, you know, engineers and people and uh, uh, tech professionals are so, like, eager to, like, come out and, like, and move to these areas um, that the housing uh, uh, prices just skyrocket. Right. And Which of is course, about to happen in Long Island City. Right. And then, of course, what, again, like I said earlier, what happens when that, you know, who, who's at the, the, who bears the brunt of that, you right. know, basically. Um People of color, mostly, um, who are, um, you know, over-indexed in um, in poverty. And so, um, I mean, I'm happy about it. It it says... um, the, they're responding to the to the uh, the affordability gap with a five hundred million dollar pledge to address homelessness and develop affordable housing across the region, um, and basically uh, to uh, there'll be the money will be used to increase housing options for low income, low and middle income workers, um, and you know I guess it's a little early to figure out like exactly how it's going to be used. I know a lot of it will go to Construction costs and helping um, helping developers um, develop like better housing for like low and middle income workers. I just I hope that you know other large tech companies that kind of contribute to housing uh, inequality in these uh, tech hubs uh, will take note and 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 look at this as an example um, of how you can give back you know and and kind of. Um, clean up some of the damage that you do uh, to these neighborhoods. That's good news. But also, take note, other companies. Yeah. So, yeah. That's a good note. End it on a good note. Yay, black people. (laughs) Okay, are we ready to LLC? So, oh, I guess I should explain. So, LLC stands for Love, Learned, Canceled. And Mm -hmm. at the end of every episode, we want to, like, look back over our week and just figure out um, things that we did all three, four, thing, one thing, um, to kind of just like go back and review mm-hmm. for us. So you want to go first? Uh, sure. I'll do my canceled first. I want to okay. do my loved, my loved and learned is the same and I didn't put it on here because I like to surprise ya. Okay. Um, so <laughs> my canceled this week is period stigma and um, my friend, a really close friend of mine has, uh, an Instagram and mm-hmm. you can follow her at, at tacos, tequila, tampons, <laughs> just like one big word. Okay. Um, and she had had an event a couple weeks ago with the same name where she like rents out kind of like a living room space and just has a bunch of women come in and like talk about our periods, talk about some things that we do to get over it, some things that we do to help with PMS, like Mm -hmm. cramps. And it just, like, put me in such a space to remember how much I've been taught about periods and menstruation being something dirty and secretive that you don't talk about. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'm I'm not going to do that anymore. It's, like, not that I need to be, like, talking about my period all day with strangers, but Mm -hmm. I do think that we're more comfortable talking about pooping than we are about periods. And it's like, none of us would be here if women didn't have periods. Like, childbirth can only happen. And so, um, it's just like a, it's, it's like a powerful thing. And I feel a lot better about just my, like, goddess status of being, like, a woman who bleeds every month in preparation for a baby that may or may not ever get there but you know it's like my body is doing the most natural thing that it can do and it kind of goes along with like breastfeeding stigma and just like women's bodies being able to be as messy and strong and beautiful and all of that like we we don't need to just be perfect we never sweat we never do you know we're Mm -hmm. humans and so um that's definitely my cancel for this week if you want to follow my friend, uh, it's a public Instagram at Tacos Tequila's Tampons. And it's just like she'll post like super pretty pictures and 
um, kind of link you to a lot more resources to talk about menstruation. So I'm here for it. I love it. Yeah. Uh, that reminds me of um, <clears throat> a recent episode of RuPaul's Drag Race where mm. uh, Manila Luzon, who's like a front runner in this current season of uh, All Stars, um, she uh, she wanted to wear this uh, this dress that was uh, inspired by um, uh, used. Uh, pad mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and the dress was beautiful but it was clearly like you know evocative of um, you know a period right and um, and RuPaul uh, apparently told her that it was uh, and we only learned this from Manila who posted it on posted the dress on Instagram and said this is what I would have this is what I wanted to wear mm-hmm. but she was told by RuPaul that it was um, what she say uh, not in good taste and, Which, like, and I'm just like RuPaul. You you make RuPaul like deep so jokes in, right. and like you're impersonating, you know, women. Women, and, and how dare and you just, like, take so away? Crass. It, and but, like <laughs> you've made your, uh, and this is like I don't know if this will be controversial, but like you've made your whole life. You, RuPaul, you, RuPaul wouldn't be RuPaul if if he wasn't emulating a woman. And so it's like, but you want all the parts that are makeup and jewelry and hair, but then when it comes to the part of like really down to the biology of a woman, then that's in poor taste. Yeah. But you could put on the makeup and the hair and the dresses. Yeah. I do think that that, you know, that will be a controversial statement because I do think that gender expression is more than the makeup and the hair and the jewelry. But yes, to your point, then if we're celebrating gender expression... Right, and the fluidity of that. And the fluidity of gender, then let's celebrate all of it. Right. And not leave out this very crucial part of gender yeah. and biology uh, and expression that uh, it, it's literally responsible for life. Yeah. So that just, that was just crazy to me. Um, so yeah, I, I, I co-signed that. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you wanted to do... No, you do your, what's your cancel? Oh, what's my cancel? My cancel is Marco Polo. Have you heard this the app? app? Yes. Yeah. So I, um, I really, I liked Marco Polo, um, although as soon as, like, I uh, downloaded it, like, I started getting, you know, old flames started trying to Marco Polo me. Oh, no. Like, I, know about this. Uh, I didn't <laughs> know that many people used it. Apparently, they do. Like, a lot of my, like, my friends and family used it. Um, hmm. it it's a thing. But, um. I never have it. I mean, I don't know what it is. So, I, um, I had. Uh, when I first downloaded Marco Polo months ago, uh, I um, I had very limited use of it because I told it that it could not integrate with my contacts. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't want to. In order for you to like find, oh, yeah, you know, yeah. people who other people in my contacts who are using Marco Polo, then I have to hand them over to you basically instead of me being able to know who you know who. Of which of my friends are using Marco Polo and then just adding them manually, right? So I had limited use, which I was totally fine with. I just had like a few people that I could Marco Polo with and I was fine with that. Um, and then I just really had no use for the app anymore because like I said, it was, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but but then I opened it recently uh, because somebody, you know, again, told me that they had it and suggested that I add them. and. Marco Polo had up had integrated with all of my contacts. Even though you told them no. Even though I told them no. How? I don't know. I just opened the app and then uh, then it had all these had all my phone numbers in there and it was like Maggie, who is my gran- is my is my grandmother, is using uh, Marco Maggie's Polo. Maggie's Marco Polo. Maggie's What's she Maggie sending? loves. She's a tech goddess. You just don't know. What? <laughs> she's sending little videos. Yes, That's Maggie is on really it. She'll she Facetime during the day. I love she's on that. It. She okay. has a uh, she has a Fitbit. Okay, she's girl. on it. Okay, uh, she counts her steps. Um, <laughs> That's but, really cute. But and you know me at first, I'm like, oh, yeah, I want to add my grandma. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, wait a minute, right? How, how do you know? How do you know? My grandma has Marco Polo. So I just it just made me so tired. And actually, Philip was laughing at me because he was like, you are really upset about this, aren't you? <laughs> I'm like, yes, because I, it's a I am problem. tired. It, it is. It, it is. A simple, a larger problem, which yeah. is just businesses like feeling beholden to your information, and I and I refuse to like sur- 
refuse to believe that we have just fully surrendered ourselves to a world where like we don't like, have any we don't say. have anything to ourselves anymore yep. like literally like i mean you you know I, 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 a few months ago i wrote about this story um i wrote about this company called clear which is um you know you they're based mostly in airports where you could like scan your fingerprint mm-hmm. or your eyes or whatever to uh skip the line and it's like even our bodies now like the, the last thing that we have to, that that is ours our you know, are, are, are about to like be like monetized and sold and so like if i want to if i want to hold on to my contacts fucking marco polo <laughs> i should be able to to do that you hear that i said no <laughs> That's crazy to me. It is and then I just like, I was like, okay, I just deleted my, I deleted everything and yeah. just deleted the app. And I just, I, they're canceled and I will never use it again. And I don't um, understand how they can do that. I don't, because of what, you know, what, what do you do? You know, and I, I, and there's an argument that there needs to be more tech regulation, but then you look at, you know, a lot of people making the regulations and they don't even know how to use Facebook. You know, they don't know the difference between the iPhone and the Android. And so it's like, this is why, you know, we need younger uh, energy mm-hmm. in, in Congress. We need young people making laws. We need um, more people uh, of common interest coming uh, together to, like, talk about this stuff. Because that's crazy. Like, And, and we shouldn't just, like, anybody listening, you sh- we shouldn't be, like, sitting back and just letting, like, like, companies just, like, treat us any kind of way. Like, yes, we are... But we are we are consumers, and we are paying for a certain service. But you need me and my service just as much as I want to use your service. Right. So that is that should be the agreement. I should be able to know what I'm buying up front right. and what I'm using up front without having to like sign away things that I don't know about. So Marco Polo, you're canceled. Cancel. Okay. <laughs> Um, I feel like my loved and learned is going to be a combo. So I don't know if you want to do yours or you want to do mine. Um, we c- I can do mine. Okay. So um, I am. I'll save. Yeah, I do one of my love. Okay. So I'm loving. Um, I'm almost like <sighs> afraid to even like put this out into the universe because I don't think I've really talked about it that much just like how much I stand for Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez because mm-hmm. you know how it is like I, as soon as you start really liking somebody yep. like <laughs> they go down like you like they tweet something or say yep. something that's like and you're like oh oh um, okay. yeah don't know her can't have any nice things yeah Um, but for now um, and you know that it could also be just because you know we're just we've become jaded at this point but for now um, I'm just so like heartened by the energy that she's bringing to um, Washington and um, and on the larger scale to um, conversations about um, wealth and um, and uh, power and privilege and I love that um, she's making these older white male, uh, congressmen like nervous and like they they just don't know what to do yeah. you know like this young uh woman who's a minority and from the bronx and that's is the youngest like congress you know uh congresswoman ever um elected uh to the house of representatives um they they they're shaking their boots and she com- she's come in right off the bat talking about like a 70 percent um tax rate on like people who make more than 10 million dollars um and they're like, oh hell no! Mm-hmm. You know, you you want to come in here and like and, and make a uh, living fairer, right? And and <laughs> you want to come in here and that. like create more services for poor people, right? You want to create Medicare for all, like that is how one. Okay, so one, I also want to address this, and we want to come. I I think we both want to come back to this maybe around tax time because, um, I think uh tax literacy and financial literacy as a whole is something we want to definitely like tackle in this podcast but like 70% a 70% tax rate for millionaires million uh, uh several times over it's not a lot of money right like that i mean that's not that high compared to what it's typically been like the um 
apparently from like 1930 to 1980, the top uh, income tax rate was like around 78 percent. Right. Um, and, and it's th- you're a millionaire, boo hoo. Right. Like, and it, and it it, it, it <laughs> has even exceeded that, you know, um, at, at different times. The problem is over the years. Uh, legislators, mostly Republicans, have been able to institute these laws that kind of, you know, redistribute wealth back to these top earners. So all the like, of course, there's uh, you, you're getting lower tax rates, but that also means that you get less services, and then you have to like fight for things like health care, and like it's just not. It it becomes less of a given that we would ever raise taxes to like give more pe- you know give more people <laughs> health care or um uh create create more access to edu- uh, to um higher education yeah. um and so i think i love that to kind of round the circle i love that she is like making us question those things again just by like st- just by proposing it like even if nothing's that she uh proposes gets passed or whatever or like nancy pelosi you know is like that's too left or too radical or whatever for Mm -hmm. me to present on the floor or whatever um i i think it's extremely valuable that she's like even like starting these conversations and going on like um stephen colbert and talking about a 70 percent tax rate and um making people see like how like a functioning democracy uh, where people are taken care of actually works. And and so that's one thing, the financial part. Uh, but I also love just how she is bringing a new energy in terms of youthfulness. Yeah. Right? So, like, she's so social media savvy. She knows how to make a viral video. Like, she, like, took a group because, obviously, um, I, I, I hate that. I keep saying obviously. But... Uh, we know that Mitch McConnell, uh, who is the Senate Majority Leader, is the one who refuses to take a shutdown, a, a, a bill to reopen the government to mm-hmm. President Trump because he knows that it would um, pass, right. um, and he doesn't want to embarrass Trump. And so uh, he's, you know, has been absent on the floor, and so she basically did a video where she, she and her aides are like, you know, stomping around the um, the. Uh, Capitol Hill, like just asking where's Mitch. She's like, he's not, he's not on the floor. He's not in the cloakroom. He's not in the. And she's like, where's Mitch? And she started this hashtag, where's Mitch? And it went viral. And I, I love that. Like, yeah. Like we, like more senators, Democrats, you need to listen to Alexandria Ocasio Cortez uh, and learn how to troll because. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's how we get stuff right, done. Right. That's how we're gonna get stuff done. Um, and even like Joel Lieberman, who was like responsible for partly for um giving us the watered down uh healthcare bill we had last time um t- said something about her on Twitter and she retweeted and said new party who this uh, <laughs> <laughs> so i just i love her and i hope that you know she can stay focused and that you know we don't lose another fave anytime mm-hmm. soon that's awesome yeah <laughs> um okay my loved and learned are the same. And last week, I loved Soldier Boy's interview on The Breakfast Club. <sighs> now, I loved it from <laughs> a energy perspective. Okay. I loved it from a mood perspective, from a, like, hype myself 2019 perspective. And, yeah, I just, like, enjoyed the crap out of it. I watched it. Probably shouldn't say this, but I watched it at work. I was, like, (laughs) doing work and then also listening to it on my phone and, like, watching it. And I just, like, appreciate drugs aside because Soldier Boy, like, looked very dry. Mm -hmm. Looked like he had not been very good to himself. But I feel like I appreciated him really coming with his list of things that he's done that people have tried to play him on. Okay. So it's like when you listen to songs by Drake and Migos and some of these other young kids that I don't know, they are like using beats and flows that Soldier Boy did when we were 15, 16. And like just the like 
while he hasn't had new music out, there is this, there is a sense that like the social media rappers that we know, the sound, the the rappers that we know that started on SoundCloud, even like, I want to say as far as like the Chance the Rappers and the Toby and Eggways and like all these rappers that are like making it huge without a record deal, without a record label, like Soldier Boy was the beginning of social media. So Soldier Boy was what? like in the beginning of social media. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> Soldier Boy was like the rapper pushing himself out there and really making himself a name outside of what a label was doing for him. Mm-hmm. So like everything that he's ever done is basically on YouTube mm-hmm. or Vine, if you can find the Vine videos on YouTube. But like um in the interview he talks about how he was really the first rap artist to sell more digital copies than disc copies which like i don't know if we have the facts for that but like think of how many people you know whose ringtones was crank that soldier boy it was a lot yeah and um so yeah it just was like interesting to me for him to come on and like even have charlemagne who like is very often super antagonistic and mm-hmm. like really just like making fun of people he was like shut up by a lot of things that he said yeah um so i don't know my friends and i have just been joking about like that's the energy we're gonna have this year like anytime somebody tries to tell me i'm like not the best i'm just gonna like come with all my receipts and Mm -hmm. like talk about the best like how i've had the best year for myself Mm because that's what he was saying he was like i've had the best comeback and they're like you don't have any music out he's like y'all are talking about music i'm talking about my life like i my life has been the best comeback Mm -hmm. and like who's to tell you that that's not true i i appreciate that i i and i did watch the clip um and i i didn't watch the whole interview but i saw (laughs) I saw the part that went viral when he when he stood up and said Drake, Drake? <laughs> Aubrey Graham in a wheelchair, Drake who got body by Pusha T, Drake. Oh my God! Um, and so yes, he he did look a little um, uh, substance not enti- enhanced, not entirely clear minded. Yes. Okay. Um, and that I, and you know confidence. You know, we'll get you a lot of places, yes. as, as we've seen, and you know, among our, um, you know, yep. uh, non PLC peers, um, and so I applaud that, you know, and I, I don't, you know, I don't uh, come down on him at all for like just having like the hotspot to like come on the sh- <laughs> on uh, <laughs> the Breakfast Club and just be like, yes, I had the best year. Yeah. And yes, my life is great because yeah. like you said, like, good. Right. Good for you. And I'm, who like, am I to say that it's not? Who am I to say? I don't know your life. Right. You know, and if you're happy when whatever is going on in your life, yep. then hey, you go for it. I guess my, um, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, this, and this is actually like a very good business story. I, cause I do like want to delve a bit more into this on my own time, but it, like you can't just like take, take people's stuff, you know? But, and like, okay. You know, and like, and I know what you're gonna say. You can, like, depending on who you are. Private label. Right? And it's pri- my, I've made a career out of private label, and that's what we did. Mm-hmm. You have to make a certain percentage of tweaks. So that it's not a direct knockoff. And with this, because of the licensing and all of that, I get it. But it's like Apple, like people do it for for Apple products all the time. It's called off market. It's called, you know what I mean? And so like, yes, I hear you. Go ahead. (laughs) I just think think private label is such a thing. It is, but this is not private label. Like this is like him selling knockoff consoles or or private label consoles that play companies games right. or purportedly play companies games that he has not licensed. Okay, yes. And so I think that if we But he said that he did. Then why are these companies like once I, I don't know, but to me that that shows that he at least knows that that's what up. he was supposed to do. Like he he doesn't he doesn't think that like you can just go and take it. Like, I feel like he he at least talked the talk that, like, licensing was part of the plan. I think it opens up an opportunity to have a conversation about how do, how do you go about doing these things, you know? 
Yeah. Like if like if he if say he say he wanted to like create a console, you know, what would be the proper challenge for him to do that? Because he does have like a brand name, 100%. you know, and what is, what what is happening in his life or what is lacking or the right connection or the right conversations that is happening that he couldn't do this in the right way to where it didn't like result in these kind of foolish headlines, right. you know? Yeah. What gets triggered immediately in my mind, I instinctively want to be like, okay, so what is the right way to do this? Mm-hmm. You know, so if, if if Nintendo was saying, basically it's threatening to him a law, threatening to sue him with a lawsuit and made him take down his website and then the makers of Fortnite said, you know, basically, hell no. <laughs> uh, Fortnite will not run on his uh, game, he, uh, on his console. He did not license it. Um, then I want to instinctively say, okay, here is what could have been done. Here is how you would make this kind of deal. Here is, you know, uh, how you license, you know, another brand for your company or whatever. You And, you know, as someone who works in fashion, like you say, you know about white labeling and private labeling. So how, right. so what's the right way, yeah. you know? Um, but, Props for energy. Right? That, <laughs> and that's what I loved and learned is like, I wish, like, I feel like he kept saying like, y'all y'all are not going to play me like I didn't teach him everything he knows, right? Mm-hmm. And it's like, very subjective as that is. It's like, that's the energy I want. Like, you're not going to come and tell me that mm-hmm. I like, haven't had the greatest growth comeback mm-hmm. from 2018 to 2019. Because like, right. I did. And I'm the only person that would know that. Right. But. I'm and with that, yeah, we've go been talking. ahead and <laughs> go forth and Superman that hoe. Yes, <laughs> now watch me, you. Um. All right. Yeah, that's, that's it. Episode <laughs> one of your business. Woo! Yay, we did it. We did it. Uh, we hope you guys come back. We'll be doing this more, and for some episodes, we definitely want to have guests on to like help us figure out some of these questions of how to do it the right way. Mm-hmm. Um, help us get there. So come on back. Yeah. I'm looking forward to all the interviews that we will have and um, just learning how to implement these things that, you know, we as young black millennial professionals need to know yes. in order to, you know, navigate this crazy world we live in. Yeah. Um, yeah. So come back. Yes. All right. It's your business. You can follow me um, on Instagram and Twitter at A New Creature. It's A N U Creature. Cool. And you can follow me on Twitter uh, at JJ McCorvey, two J's M C C. And he's verified, y'all, so you'll know it's him. I d- <laughs> he has a blue chat. So yeah, two J's M C C O R V E Y. And actually, I just opened up my Instagram again to okay. public Got use. It. So I guess y'all can follow me on there too and just be all in my business. <laughs> right. Uh, at JB Fly, J A Y B, the letter B, Fly, F L Y. And we'll see you then. All right. Love you guys. Bye-bye. Bye bye.